Greetings, and welcome to episode 6. In today's episode, we'll be discussing meditation, and how I got started, and several different techniques I've used over the years. Uh, one for sitting, one for when I'm active, like at work, and just at all times in general, just whenever you think about it. Enjoy. Okay, so meditation. Uh, how did I get started with meditation? Okay, I was at an old book sale. Not to say that I was at an old book sale, I was at a sale that were selling old books. And one of the books I purchased was called Powers of Mind. Oh, excuse me. And in that book, it had several different meditation techniques. And none of them worked. <laughs> Seriously, not joking. None of them worked. I couldn't, I couldn't get the hang of it. I couldn't grasp what it really meant to be to be meditating this was when I was 20 years old I'm 40 years old now so you can imagine that I was you're young you get frustrated so I just figured that it was BS and anyone can breathe in and out whatever whatever <laughs> But I would catch myself every once in a while and give it a try. Okay, I'd give it a try. Not doing nothing for me. Nothing. <laughs> so I went on like that for a few years and it would. I'd get in this kick and I'd try and meditating for a few days and I just couldn't grasp it. And then I was playing a game. I think it was Mahjong or. I think that's what the game was. Either that or it was chess. One of the two games. I was playing on my computer. Against my computer. The chess, anyway. And uh, something just occurred to me about the proper way to play it. And I don't think it was the chess. I think it was the Mahjong. Or Mahjong or whatever. However you pronounce it. <clears throat> something occurred to me about how to play it properly is in a state of meditation you have to focus your eyes a particular way so you can see what you're looking for in other words you can't be ahead of yourself with your mind you have to be using in the moment with your mind and your eyes at the same time looking for what you're looking for and the breathing as soon as I started focusing like that, the breathing was automatic. And as soon as I started breathing like that, every book I'd ever read on meditation just went running through my head. This is meditation. And I was like, whoa. So I started doing that technique without playing the game and got pretty good at it. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was actually, it was, <laughs> One of those moments where you're like, yeah, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> uh, and I'm not here to tell you how, oh, it, it changed my life. Blah, blah, blah. I'm just, tr I, I want to teach the technique I use. And uh, it may not work for you. I think it's awesome. I think the different techniques I use are awesome. That technique was you're putting all of your focus and intention through your eyes. You're focusing on your eyes. You're letting your mind control your eyes because you're telling your mind what you want, what you're looking for, what you're trying to accomplish, and you're letting your brain control the mechanism. It's kind of like the same way you sing. You know the notes. You just trust your body to do what you need it to do when you need it to do it. And yes, you add inflection here and there and and you add notes and take notes away like any instrument but for the most part you're letting your mind you're letting your brain control the actual instrument 
while your mind tells your brain, okay, these are the lyrics, these are the notes, here's the timing. Okay, now. Okay, now. Well, the same thing goes for this game, and this is, I don't know where it came from, but just out of the blue, this is how you play this game. Focus, focus your mind and your eyes like this. And then I added to that, because of something somebody else taught me when I was about 25 years old. So I was able to add to meditating this is what it, the, my my what i call my walking meditation this is the, the when i'm out in the world doing my job working whatever this is how i do it instead of focusing on the breath first i'm making sure i'm breathing properly then i'm making sure i'm putting my focus on now eyes, brain, body, all body movement. I'm focusing on stepping, when the joints bend, how the muscles flex, all of that. But anyway, back to the beginning. When I first figured out how to really meditate, oh, I, it was just so relaxing and it was a relief having learned it and then I kind of felt bad for thinking it was BS because I couldn't figure it out. I personally couldn't figure it out. But just it, I said I wasn't going to say this, but yeah, it helped tremendously in relieving stress, calming myself enough to not think. And then I learned several other techniques beyond that, but I'm not sure that I could even begin to convey that to another person because that technique is tied to, uh, what would you call it, an ability I have? I don't know if anybody else has the ability. It's just something I've been able to do, something I noticed I could do since I was about four and a half, five years old. So anyway, so the meditation. Just, you've heard it all before. You lay you breathe, it's all good. You breathe in, you breathe out, and you need at least 20 minutes, and whatever. Now, the actual physical part of meditation, and this is how I would describe it to you. Sure, you're breathing, but don't just breathe in and breathe out, and don't count your breaths, and don't, don't expect anything, but try this. As you're breathing in and out, feel the breath, not in your face, not in your sinuses, not in your mouth, not in your throat, in your heart, as if it were an emotion. Feel it, and as the feeling as you're feeling, breathe through that feeling. Anything you're feeling. If you're listening to music and you love it and it gives you that feeling, breathe through that feeling so that you can feel your breath like it was an emotion. Focus on that feeling. Especially if, if you're generating a positive emotion. If you're not generating a positive emotion, then just feel your breath and let your meditation take you where it's going to take you or control it whatever you do I'm just saying this is the technique I use don't count your breaths don't even really listen because you're not trying to use your physical senses to accomplish this I tell people don't breathe in through your lungs breathe in through your soul Feel it. Deep breath. And as you blow it out, blow it out through your feeling. Bring it in through your feeling. Blow it out through your feeling. Feel it. Like you feel anger. Like you feel embarrassed. Like you feel love. Feel it. And from there, because of the, the kind of jobs I do for a living, and because I have children, I didn't really have 
15 or 20 minutes to just sit and meditate. And it's not because kids make noise. It's because kids need supervision. Oh, excuse me. And my, my wife is not a super spiritual person. She, she's, she appreciates the things I know and the, my little daily rituals I perform in my life. She appreciates that, but she doesn't participate. She's not a super spiritual person. She knows there's something out there, but she told me point blank that the universe terrifies her. So I don't think she's going to go much further than the physical realm. So not only do I have children to look after, I have a relationship to maintain. And 20 minutes by oneself between wife and kids, that's, that's asking a bit much. And <laughs> we both work. We're both parents. It's unfair to say, hey, you take care of everything. I'm taking 20 or 30 minutes for me not really all that fair and then once the kids go to bed I just want to enjoy my wife <laughs> just sitting we're not parents anymore we're just husband and wife for 30 minutes and then we're going to bed so now we're not husband and wife we're sleep so yeah I wanted I wanted to develop a technique that I could use anywhere at any time kids wife around didn't matter because you said, well, all the noise, I can't meditate with noise. Yes, you can. It is a predisposition to want quiet while you meditate. You can incorporate every new sound into your meditation as part of your meditation. Even if it's a harsh sound, it's just, it's a part of your environment. Make it part of your meditation. Make the chairs. I don't meditate with my eyes closed. Because I'm not trying to go somewhere. I'm trying to center. When I meditate, I'm trying to stay, stay centered and focused. I leave the, the wandering. I leave that for when I'm asleep. Because I noticed that when I did a meditation where I let my spirit wander, I wouldn't dream at night. Because I experienced the dream already. And I, I love dreaming. So I, I, don't, I don't meditate with my eyes closed. Okay, so the walking part of the meditation. This is the walking meditation. That what I was just talking about. That's just your basic sit down. You got 20, 30 minutes. Meditate. I'm not saying I've never had 20 or 30 minutes to sit and meditate. It just doesn't happen that often when you're married to have kids and work. <laughs> <laughs> so walking meditation. I usually work construction trades, uh, landscaping, uh, framing, excavation, that kind of thing. And to boot, I am a professional driver. I'm a truck driver. So I don't do that currently, but that's, if if I were to, if someone were to say, well, what do you do? Well, I'm a professional driver, class A, CDL, card holding member, all that good stuff. Anyway, the walking part of the meditation is, pretty much the same technique but instead of focusing on the eth ethereal ethereal <laughs> elements of the meditation the, the intangibles like your soul your breath feeling your breath what you're focusing on is your physical body and how it feels while you're meditating you're focusing on every footstep. Uh, you're breathing, obviously. Where you're looking, what you're looking at. Focusing on not having any type of emotional or mental interpretation of anything except for what you're doing. Uh, for instance, construction. All you're doing is what you're doing. Most people, they let your thoughts drift when they're... Hey, perfect time to meditate uh, I'm picking up this whatever it is that's what I'm focused on I'm focused on how my body's moving while I'm breathing focused on how my body's moving what it feels like to grab this thing what it feels like to do what I'm doing within that instance uh, and it works for the most part you'll find yourself 
not doing it. And when, just like any other meditation, when you find yourself slipping out of the meditation, if you caught yourself, put yourself back in it. That simple. Uh, and this technique works for, so far, every situation I've ever been in where I couldn't be sitting down at the time. I'm walking. I'm breathing. I'm focused on what I'm doing. What the bag feels like in my hand. What the backpack feels like on my back. What my clothes feel like rustling up against my flesh while I'm walking. I'm putting my focus anywhere but in the mind. I am in the moment. This is a moving meditation. This is so that every little distraction doesn't distract you. It's part of it. You hear the car horn. You hear the car go by. You hear you're using a hammer. Every sound, every action is part of the meditation uh, because it's part of your environment. I mean, let's let's face it. When you want that nice 30 or 20 or 30 minute quiet time, that's your environment. You make sure your environment is quiet and then you meditate. And that's your meditation. It's a part of your your environment becomes part of your meditation. You can have a noisy environment and still meditate as long as you make sure you incorporate every sound like it's a new sound. You using a hammer is repetitive over and over, but every hit of that hammer is a new sound. You're not thinking ahead of how many times I'm going to hit. You're not thinking ahead of how many more times. Oh, God, how many more times is he going to use that? You're just, it's a noise at the place that you're at. It's part of the environment. And it works. You stay grounded. You stay focused. You also, you focus on your muscle groups. Focus on your chakras while you're doing this so while you're moving you'll start to notice how your body works it's pretty amazing actually and you're almost it's almost like you can see it from the from if the arm had a point of view you're seeing it from the arms point of view every muscle every tendon for me anyway I'm not sure that it'll work for you uh, like I said a lot of the meditations I tried at the beginning didn't work for me a lot of the meditations I try now don't work for me uh, I still try to learn new techniques, but I, what's the word? I, file, I, I find myself falling back on the techniques that I came up with for me. I thought that I would share them because I know that there's probably, there's got to be other people out there that haven't got the hang of meditating, don't have the time to meditate, and my walking meditation is perfect. You don't even have to have your eyes closed. You don't need 20 to 30 minutes. It's about being busy. That's the whole part. That's the whole premise of that meditation. The truth of that meditation is you're busy. The world around you is busy. Now I'm going to stay centered and focused within that busy. I'm going to stay in this moment. Every moment. Every whack of the hammer. Every footstep. Every punch of the keys when I'm typing whatever it is I'm doing for my work or doing at the moment there's no reason why it has to break your meditation that is a conscious decision to, oh I lost it why did you lose it you allowed you allowed this foreign sound object person to come in and perturb your meditation you'll find that you don't really need the 20 to 30 minutes of free time or a whole lot of silence if you learn this. It's part of the environment. Every little bit. Every little bit is part of the environment. The phone ringing. The TV on. The people fighting in the next room, the next apartment. The cars down on the street. Ah, It's all part of the meditation. Because this environment, let's face it, this is the environment you're in most of the day. You need to learn how to be in your environment that you spend most of your time in. And then when you get home, then try that relaxing 20 to 30 minute complete silence meditation. You'll notice a distinct difference. And I noticed I prefer the noisy meditation. 
because I notice when I'm doing my quiet meditation, I'm listening for the quiet, listening for the quiet, <laughs> because I'm so used to incorporating noise into it that I'm listening. Why am I listening? I'm listening for quiet, <laughs> which means I'm putting a, per a, a perception out that there's got to be quiet. Is that quiet? <laughs> it's kind of funny, actually. Uh, but yeah, I it just I had to come up with it because I didn't have the luxury, especially being a truck driver. You just you're never home, and there's never quiet time. Oh, what about when you're done for the day? Obviously, you've never been to a truck stop. When you're at a truck stop. Uh, you got the guy next to you's got a refrigerated trailer, and so that refrigerator unit's running all night, and it'll kick on and kick off. Kicks on when it gets too warm, kicks off when it gets the temperature, or vice versa. It'll kick. It, maybe it's heated, something that needs to be kept at temperature, but a, a higher temperature. Either way, it'll kick on and it'll kick off. Or some people just idle their truck so they can use their AC. There's there is no quiet time when you're driving. There is no quiet time. If you're driving, your truck's loud. I would say the radio's loud, but I don't drive with my radio on. I sometimes drove with my CB on. But for the most part, I just like to listen to the truck. That was part of the meditation. The wheels on the road, the engine turning, the RPMs, the scenery going by, every bit of it. And then there was something while I was driving. Actually, I just incorporated this, this into it before I even became a truck driver. I got to break away from this topic to 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 explain what I'm going to say next. Remember back in the 90s, you had those three-dimensional pixel pictures that you couldn't see what it was unless you did the special technique to try and draw it out. Well, it's a it's something to do with if you remember, because I remember when I first learned how to do it, it would make my temporal lobe really really tired right in here right in here and it would just be like it was being fatigued like I was using it to rip iron bars open is what it felt like and you could feel the strain of it all it felt good like stretching a muscle I hadn't used my whole life but you could feel the pressure of it all the way down through here through the sinuses and the eyes which you couldn't move your eyes one way or another until you figured out how to do it how to repeat it then you could look around at the whole picture instead of trying to take it in all at once and you, the first time you see it you're like oh my god that's awesome and it is it's awesome well I incorporated this into the meditation and so I'm driving along driving along and I noticed that I'm focused, but the eyes like to wander whether or not. Oh, look, a sign. Oh, look, a sign. Oh, look, this. And I don't mean street signs. I mean billboard. A sign that you don't have to look at. And I noticed that when you look and you use your eyes like you were trying to look at one of those 3D pictures, you were less prone to look at things that were unnecessary for your journey, for your travels. And you get less tired from, and believe it or not, I don't see, most people don't drive that much. I have driven more in the last 10 years than most people will drive in their entire life. I have driven in almost every one of the 50 connected states, the 48 connected states, I should say. I've driven in every state except for North Dakota and Montana. <laughs> And I was born in Montana, so imagine how bad that sucked. <laughs> and so when I say that your eyes will get tired if you just let them wander all over, they will. And it doesn't matter how much sleep you've gotten, how much coffee you've drank. Once your eyes get tired, you're done. And so I was glad that I had already had this technique. And when I started incorporating it into my professional driving, my eyes got less tired. Because they're not, they're only going where I'm deliberately putting them. And it saves you, your eyes getting tired. Well, so now you incorporate this into the meditation. And, oh man, it just adds a level of clarity that I wasn't prepared for, actually. Uh, 
same technique. Like you're looking at that one of those 3D pixelated pictures that you can't see until you learn the technique on how to see it. So I'm doing that. And they say, well, how do you do that? You have no reference point. You don't need a reference point. You didn't have to have a reference point for those pictures. I, the way I was taught is look past the picture. So I'm looking. If there's a car in front of me, look past the car. Look past the horizon. And well, they're doing, you're not looking at nothing. There's never any spot in the universe where there's nothing. There's air, dust, dirt, molecules of some sort. There's oxygen all around you. That's something. So what you're doing is you're focusing on this point that's past the horizon and everything from that point back to your eyes just like one of those 3d pictures that's what you're doing and when you're looking at one of those 3d pictures you're looking past the point and everything and that's why it works because you're looking at everything in layers back to your eyes and that's why it pulls out everything in 3d because you're chum, 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 chum. It's almost like using your periphery, but straight ahead. Anyway, I incorporated this into the meditation. And that's just how I do it. I don't know how it would work for you to do this, but that's how it works for me. You focus your eyes. You look out past whatever your closest object is, you look out past it. Like I have a wall, a window, a wall, the next unit or building or whatever you want to call it and I can't see anything else so I'm looking past that wall of the next building over and now I'm focusing on being past that wall and everything back to my eyes and now you can feel your synapses light up while you're doing this while you're meditating now incorporate that feeling you're not just breathing through this feeling breathe through that feeling also and the clarity it's almost, it's almost tingly an almost tingly sensation from the front of your brain to the back well that's how it feels for me I don't know how it feels for you I hope that you can get it to work because it's it's amazing and to maintain it is very very tiring when you first start doing it but once you get the hang of it, like I said, it's like using a muscle you've never used before. And you'll feel that you're using more of your brain and that you can use more of your brain. It's very, very interesting. Anyway, but like I said, that's the reason why I stopped closing my eyes when I meditate. That's one of the reasons why I don't need quiet time to meditate. I'm meditating right now. Can you tell? I mean, do you need to be able to tell? <laughs> It's, it's once you learn how to do it while you're active, you can maintain proper breathing while you're active. You don't, you no longer need the trigger of, well, I got to be sitting and it's got to be quiet. I mean, it got so bad. I was to the point where uh, it's too quiet and I'm not moving. <laughs> now I can do it whenever. I'm good enough now at it that I can do, I can sit over in my comfy chair, lay down on this couch, go walk down the street go build a house, drive a semi, whatever I need to do, I can be meditating while I do it. Oh, sorry. Uh, incense just hit my nose and it smells really good. And, uh, ooh, it smells really good. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, I, these are the techniques I've learned over the years. And yes, they are derived from the basic Count your breaths, block, clear your mind. The, my technique doesn't allow for anything to enter your mind. Is it working? You don't. How do you know? The only thing you need to be focusing on is how you feel, what your breath feels like, and then breathe through that feeling and make sure that you maintain that. And the only way to maintain that is to focus on it. If you're focused on that, you cannot possibly focus on anything else. I'm almost losing my train of thought because I'm trying to take deeper breaths to expand my meditation, but I need I need to focus right now on talking. And see, that's the one thing I haven't figured out. It's hard to maintain a proper breathing pattern while you're talking. 
I guess if I learned how to do the didgeridoo, I would be able to do that circular breathing where I could still be meditating. But for those of you that haven't figured out how to meditate, I hope that helped. And for those of you that just, you know the techniques and you got it down pat, but you just don't have time, I hope this helps you too. I mean, this is what it took for me to get on and say, wow, you know, I got this, I got this. Because when I learned it, my particular technique, it was like someone was telling me, hey, try this, while I was playing this game. Try this with your eyes. And then, boom, the breathing just automatic. And I was like, had this rush of information of every meditation technique I'd ever read about. And, boom, I was doing it. I I was doing it. And, <clears throat> and I'd like to say I had a technique before that. But it was not the same thing. It was more of a count your breathing. And the count your breathing, that's like saying, don't look over there at the elephant. <laughs> You'll be one breath, two breath, dog, pony. <laughs> Don't look at the elephant. Well, here's one that's easy. You think about whatever you want. Focus on your breathing. Not your breathing. Focus on how it feels. And then breathe through the feeling. You're using your mind in the meditation. There's no way it can run amok. Because you have to explain to your mind what you're doing. And then your mind has to give you feedback on what it is that's going on. You're telling your mind, I'm breathing through my breathing. And you're, first you're going to be like, that doesn't make any sense. Well, let's focus on what it feels like to be breathing in the first place. Not up here, here around the heart. Okay, that's what it feels like. Now, imagine that that feeling is an emotion and breathe through the feeling. Just like in your mind, imagine breathing through the emotion, through that feeling. And it works with any emotion, really. But when you focus on emotion, for emotion's sake, you expand that emotion. If you're angry and you start meditating on anger, you become more angry. So you become more breathy, I guess. Focus on the breath. And while you're imagining to your mind what it feels like, what it looks like, your mind doesn't have the chance to dog, pony, car, tires, Roof, trees, you know, you just don't have that opportunity because your mind, you're inviting the mind in with you. And then after a while, your mind gets the hang of it and it, you really don't need its participation anymore. You're just doing it. And then once you're doing it and the mind is free to roam, you're free to roam. <laughs> I hope, I hope this is helpful because it was, it, enormously helpful to me like I said it's more for the people that needed that know how to meditate but need a different technique for a more active lifestyle sports oh my god could you imagine those deep breaths while you're running oh I can only imagine now I now I want to go exercise or something <laughs> <laughs> okay but also, it's for the active, it's also for those that could just couldn't get the hang of meditating. Well, I don't get it. I don't get it. Well, hopefully, my technique gets you into it. You don't have to add the I part. That was just me because I love driving, and I made driving my meditation. The sound, the way the, feel, the, 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 way the car feels, the way the engine sounds, you can feel the RPMs. You see, you can almost see the engine turn. You can see the, the spark plugs firing, the lifters lifting. The cam, everything you see, but I know a lot about cars, so you probably won't get all that information from it, but that's what I get from it. Uh, yeah, just, I'm super excited to, just to be telling you guys about this, because I have, I have a really good feeling that it's somebody, at least one person, is going to catch what I'm trying to say and learn something from it. It's, it, like I said, it helped me out immensely. But I think I'm a little bit past the 30-minute mark. If anything I've said today was at all helpful, go ahead and click the like button. 
favorite it if you want uh, and if you would like more interesting tidbits about my life and some maybe learn something new go ahead and subscribe but until next episode we'll see you later